We all know that bees are important. They pollinate our wildflowers and uh, they pollinate our crops, our vegetables, our fruit and so on. And they're disappearing. Um, sadly, some, some of our wild bees have gone extinct. Others have declined a lot. Um, and and that, that is a really serious issue we should be worried about. Um, the, the good news is that we can all do something to help. Um, if you've got a garden, um, you can plant bee-friendly flowers. And it really does make a difference because one of the reasons they've declined in the wild is that there aren't as many flowers as there used to be in the countryside. But if everyone grows bee-friendly flowers in their gardens, um, we can turn urban areas of Britain into huge bee nature reserves. And, and wouldn't that be wonderful? I've got lots of bee-friendly flowers in my garden. Um, this is pulmonaria, really good for the bees, and I've got happy uh, bumblebees here buzzing around from flower to flower. Um, I've just bought another flower for the garden here. So this is um, perennial wallflower, erysimum, um, which is a really good uh, nectar source for bees. Um, uh, and that's, that's great, except there's a problem, uh, a potential problem anyway, um, which is that um, a lot of the plants that you can buy uh, from your garden centre uh, that you might buy specifically because they're really good for bees um, have been uh, treated with pesticides or we think they have. Um, they're mostly imported from Europe um, and the garden centres that sell them and the supermarkets and so on they want them to look beautiful, they want them to look perfect, they don't want nibbled leaves or brown bits or whatever and so to make them look perfect, um, the, the, supply, the wholesalers that rear them um, treat them with lots of chemicals. Um, and some of those chemicals are very, very bad for bees. Um, they include uh, insecticides called neonicotinoids, which um, have become notorious and the subject of a big um, kind of Europe-wide battle at the moment about whether they're really one of the major causes of bee declines or not. And sadly, those chemicals, um, these neonicotinoids, are amongst those that, that are sometimes used on, on plants intended for your garden. Um, and these are um, chemical relatives of nicotine, and they're incredibly toxic to, to bees. It takes just a few billionths of a gram to kill them. And they're systemic, so if you, if you water them on uh, or spray them on to a plant, um, they get into the tissues and they spread through the tissues and they go into the nectar and into the pollen um, and they can stay there um, for, for literally for years. Uh, a plant once it's um, been permeated with a neonicotinoid um, it, it can remain toxic for three or four years afterwards and they also last in the soil for many years. Um, so that's potentially really bad. It could be that this plant, I bought this at a, the local supermarket just an hour ago, um, it's got a little label, label on it, RHS perfect for pollinators. But it, if you ask the RHS, um, they will have to admit okay, that um, they don't actually know what chemicals the plants that they put their perfect for pollinator labels on have actually been treated with. And if this plant is full of neurotoxic insecticide, then it isn't perfect for pollinators. It's actually pretty bad for pollinators, and I really wouldn't want it to be in my garden. But the point is, we don't know. Um, if you ask at the point of sale, the garden centres and the supermarkets, they do not know what chemicals were put on these plants. Um, so what I'm proposing to do is to find out. Uh, we can analyse the, the chemicals in these plants, the pesticides, and find out which plants on sale in which garden centres are actually good for pollinators, which ones are free of insecticides, and which ones aren't. Um, and we could then call for labelling. We could say, I think it's perfectly reasonable to say, that we should know what's in these plants and if someone well-meaning person buys plants that are, that are advertised by the RHS and other people as bee friendly then they really should be bee friendly and they shouldn't contain insecticides. So the long and the short of it is um, I'm asking for you to donate some money. Um, anything will do. Um, hopefully if enough people think this is an important issue then we'll get enough money together to be able to screen a whole bunch of, of uh, bee-friendly flowers from different suppliers around the UK and test them and see who is selling uh, healthy plants that are free of insecticides and who's selling ones that they shouldn't, that have got insecticides in them. Um, and then we can put pressure on those 
suppliers to do something about it, to, to try and get their plants from a different source and make sure they're not selling plants that bees are going to visit that are full of insecticides. Unfortunately, the work's pretty expensive. It requires very fancy machines um, to, to detect these small amounts of chemicals. Um, but anything you can give would, would really help, and I think this is an important issue. I hope you agree with me. We all want to help the bees, but without the right information, we might accidentally be poisoning the bees, and what an awful thing that would be. So um, give us a pound or two, and perhaps we can together um, help to make our gardens more bee-friendly. Thank you.